Have you ever read a report of a trial and wondered if there were bits of the intervention missing? You didn't quite have enough information to know what to be able to do with that intervention. Well, we wondered that too. So in our study, we aim to look at the completeness of reporting of interventions in trials of non-drug interventions. We also wondered which elements were more frequently missing and was there anything we could do to improve this, such as by contacting authors to ask them for missing details. So our sample of papers came from the top six medical journals in the world and we sampled all the randomised trials of non-drug interventions that had been published in a one year period. We then rated each of the intervention descriptions using a checklist and we also searched for protocol information where it was referenced in the paper, online appendices and other information that we could track down. So our sample ended up consisting of 133 trials of 137 non-drug interventions. After we had rated the completeness of the description of the intervention, we found that 39% of the interventions overall were rated as being adequately described. So the ones that had a no missing for one or more of the items, we wrote to the authors with detailed questions asking for more information. Some of the authors that we wrote to were very helpful. They were able to send us missing materials or provide information that hadn't originally appeared in the primary paper. When we received this information, we re-rated the interventions and that often ended up changing the score for that intervention. Dear author, can we please ask you a few questions about the intervention in your trial of training for preventing ankle sprain reoccurrence? Sure. Is the written training pack and DVD publicly available, and if so, where? Yes, it's online at this website, or in an iPhone app, but it's in Dutch. Was there an initial face-to-face -face meeting with participants where the exercises were explained? No, the intervention was designed to be unsupervised. Who gave the material to patients and were any verbal instructions given as well? The primary researcher, but no verbal instructions were given. Can you give us details of how the grading of exercise over the eight weeks was done? Was it tailored for each patient or standardised in the exercise program? It was standardised through an exercise schedule, which is in the iPhone app. However, not all authors were so helpful. Some did not respond to multiple requests and others simply couldn't or wouldn't send us the information that we requested. Dear Author 1, are the intervention training materials mentioned publicly available? The training materials from the trial are not online. We had no reason to do that. Dear Author 2, are the written materials mentioned publicly available? No. Dear Author 3, were there any training materials used for the assistance? If so, could we have a copy, please? Due to legal copyright restrictions at my university, I am unable to send. Author 4, could you please send us a copy of the materials used in the intervention? I am unable to find my old computer files. Author 5, it's mentioned that the materials were adapted from a website. Is it possible to have a copy of what was actually given to the patients, please? I'm afraid I no longer have access to these materials. So, after we'd contacted the authors as best we could, the overall intervention rating changed to being 59% of the interventions were rated as complete. And you can see that the materials item is the item that was initially scored the worst, but actually improved the most. So, Paul, are there some things that can be done to help solve this problem? Well, Tammy, as you know, the study first of all found that there is a problem, but what you've also shown is that the problem is at least partly remediable. The authors can provide us quite often with these extra details that have been missing from the reports. So, we can fix it, but there are three things that we need to do. The first is that we need to raise awareness of the problem with the authors, with the reviewers, with the editors of journals, and all the people involved with the reporting of research. The second thing we need to do, though, is to provide some clear guidance on what sorts of things are needed for a good description. 
of an intervention. So we're working with the consulate group and the spirit group who are working on uh, a checklist for protocols to give that clear guidance, a short checklist that people can use to guide them as to what elements need to be in the description of the intervention. Not all of which necessarily needs to be in the report, but needs to be referred to in that report. And the third thing that's needed is the tools and repositories to be able to put those materials and the full description of the intervention so that they are readily accessible. And we need to be imaginative there. They can be things like video or computer programs or internet programs and all the things that might help somebody replicate that particular intervention so that we don't lose the precious resource that at the moment is going to waste because we don't know quite what people did.